Welcome to NCIX Tech Tips. So you guys like Android, you like the flexibility of sharing things easily, you like that kind of device, but you're not satisfied with the quality of the camera that is built into most phones or tablets or other thin devices, because let's face it, that's just not the way optics work. You need bulk and you need large lenses and large sensors in order to get really good quality pictures. Enter the Samsung Galaxy camera, which takes the best of Android and the best of a pocket point and shoot and combines the whole thing into one thin, versatile device. Physically, this camera, phone, phone camera, whatever it is, it's got data, so it's not quite just a camera, has a bit of a dual personality thing going on. So from the front, it looks like a standard camera. You've got your 21X Samsung zoom lens, a red eye reduction lamp, as well as a comfortable textured grip. You also can see that when we power it on and open up the camera app, the lens opens up to a great degree, giving you that distance you need in order to get a much better performing optical solution than what you can achieve with a smartphone. That is uh, not quite where the comparisons to cameras end. On this side, you can see there's a dedicated flash button, so you can either set it to trigger automatically or you can press the button and up pops the flash. Also on this side, you've got a microphone for recording audio if you're taking videos. On the other side, you've got a headphone jack, which is something you might not normally find on a camera unless it's for monitoring video, for example. You've also got a mini HDMI output that can do full 1080p, as well as a wrist strap anchor where you can attach the included wrist strap. On the top of the device, you find not only that spot for the flash, but also the power button, which acts like a, uh, like a sleep button, just like on most Android devices, as well as your zoom rocker and the shutter button itself. On the bottom of the unit, things are still looking pretty camera-y, and by opening it up here, you've got your battery, your USB connection, it uses micro USB for da data, as well as a micro SD slot supporting up to 64 gigs of storage. That's in addition to the four gigs that's on board that goes along with that quad core processor and a micro SIM slot so that you can use your data connection to instantly share anything you want, even when you're on the go. Now, when we flip it over to the back, that's where things start to get pretty darn interesting and it stops looking very much like a camera at all and looks just like any other Android device. It runs Jelly Bean 4.1 at the time of filming, although I'm, I could expect any upgrades to come along with upgrades. And you can not only do camera things like control the, uh, the manual functions for the camera itself, but you can also install any Android compatible apps that you want. So Instagram and Twitter are obvious ones, so you can instantly share your photos, but you can also install things like, I don't know, even uh, Skype or games or anything else you'd want. It's an extremely fluid experience because it is a fast device and the potential here is pretty much limitless. Now a device like this is all about the sharing options. With a traditional point and shoot camera, you would take a picture. So in this case, I'm gonna take a self portrait of myself using the best photo mode, which takes a series of shots. Here we go. And helps me automatically select the best one that isn't blurry and uh, you know, I don't have my eyes closed or anything like that. Now, instead of taking that photo, plugging it into my computer with USB, putting it into a photo application, tagging it, and then finally sending it to someone, I get the opportunity to tag it on the spot so the phone actually automatically detected that that was me. And all I have to do is click save. It saves only the best one because I did a series of photos. Go into my gallery and now I have a ton of different sharing options. So Instagram's built right into the app right there, but you can also click share to get access to Bluetooth, Gmail, Google+, Picasa, or any pretty much unlimited number of apps that you would want using the Google Play Store. Samsung also builds in their own connectivity options, so you can use All Share Play in order to automatically share with All Share enabled devices, such as a Samsung Smart TV. You can actually take pictures and share at the same time, and you can automatically upload from your camera and save to the cloud in order to not have to worry about any kind of catastrophic data loss taking out your pictures. You get that peace of mind.
Now, many of the software features are not necessarily about sharing, but just generally helping you take better pictures. So for example, you can set it up to voice activate. So if you say something like cheese or smile, the camera will put in a slight delay and then take a picture assuming everyone's ready. And if you're using something like Best Face, which is really cool, so we're gonna do an overlay demo showing you how this works, you can have a couple people or even a large group of people take a picture of them all and it'll take five quick succession shots, then you can swap out faces as needed to eliminate any funny faces or blinking or looking away from the camera. Then finally, you get everyone's face the way you want and save only the best photo. Now, smart modes here are pretty cool. So there's a number of different ones. You've got your camera and your video camera. Then if you click on modes, there's auto, which is just full auto. We know, we know what this is, and smart modes. So best photo is the one that I used for myself a moment ago, which tries to eliminate blurriness. Continuous shooting, you can do very rapid continuous shooting. Best face, I've covered already. And many, many more, including action freeze, which is a very, very high shutter speed, panorama, waterfall, silhouette, sunset, lots of different modes, with the key difference between this and a regular point and shoot being that this will continue to get updated because it's running Android software compared to most point and shoots which come with whatever firmware they happen to have, and that is pretty much it. Samsung also includes a number of different photo um, profiles that you can apply to your images after you've taken them, much like Instagram, allowing you to optimize your shots the way that you want them to look. So who is this product actually designed for? It's designed for social video takers who really want the flexibility that an Android device affords, but they want a higher quality picture than you can realistically get with the camera. It comes with pretty much everything you need to get started, including a power adapter, that wrist strap I showed you before, as well as a small micro SD card, and it has a couple features that I haven't covered already that might be the thing that really sells you on it. So number one is the automatic album organization. So it can go by people, by date, and a variety of other options. And last but not least, compared to most point and shoot cameras, it offers a much finer degree of manual control. So you can control ISO, exposure, aperture as well as shutter speed and you can set priority modes just like you can on an entry level or even regular DSLR except that this is all in the form factor of a point and shoot and with the customizability of an Android device. Thank you for checking out this NCIX Tech Tips on the Samsung Galaxy camera. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this from your favorite retailer, NCIX.com.